in the last episode we finished off the uh, inventory system which if we can press E we can see and we can move things around right click to drop them in individual slots and we actually got the hotbar to show as well which then we can control with the scroll bar which selects the uh, item on the hotbar now in this episode I'm going to show you how to press uh, keys i.e. numbers 1 to 6 because we've got 6 uh, slots in the hotbar and that will then select correct hotbar so if I select 1 that will select hotbar slot 1 so now if we open up the player script and we uh, draw down here below the uh, sorry variables at the top we can do private key code array and we can call them hotbar controls and that will equal to new key code open and close square brackets and then we'll do squiggly brackets and at the end of those we need the semicolon and then here we can say key code dot zero sorry alpha zero uh, colon and then, uh, sorry comma and we'll do that six times get rid of the last one there and we can do one two three four five and these will be equal to key one Key two, key three, four, five, six. Like so. Now, oh, you can actually add more if you've got more slots in the hotbar. So now, if I go down to update and down here, we can say four int i equals zero. I is less than hotbar controls dot length i plus plus. And in here, if import dot get key down, and we can do hotbar controls i we can say selected hotbar index equals i like so uh, one yeah, there we go. and that should be that now just quickly let wait for that to compile and then we'll just uh, test it out Okay. Yep, like this. Now I've actually done something wrong. Instead of alpha zero, we want alpha one. And these need to go like this. That's my bad. But the uh, i will always be the same. So if one will equal zero, two will equal one. Things like that. Now if we quickly play that again. We'll now see two, three, four, five, six, and one will equal one. Like so. And the scroll bar still works like this. Right. Now I'm going to show you how to open up another container. Like, for example, a chest. Now I'm going to import the standard assets first person controller, and I'll be back once I've done that. Okay, I'm back and I've got my little scene set up. I've imported the standard assets first person controller. And I've got a little uh, blue cube, which I'm now going to use as a chest. So now we're going to need to build the functionality for the chest to begin with. Instead of building the uh, prefab for the inventory first, we're going to build the code for the actual uh, chest to open. So if we go into scripts and just create a one inside here called um, chest, simply put. Inside here, we can go here. Just, uh, now I'll need to keep some of these actually. Uh, right, get rid of this size. Right, in here, we need a private player. We need to get a reference to the player, and we need a reference to the inventory manager. So inventory manager, and then player is equal to find object of type player. And we can do the same with the inventory system, like so. Or have I given that an... Yes, I have. So instead of this, we can just say inventory system uh, manager dot instance, like so. I didn't do the same with the player. No, I didn't. Whew. Right. This also needs an inventory system. So, uh, sorry, an inventory. So private inventory inventory is equal to new inventory and we can give that uh, let's see the player's got 9, 18, 12, 36 I think so this will have 27 should do now 
down here, we need on mouse over, and we say flow distance is equal to vector three dot distance between transform dot position and player dot transform dot position. Now, if distance is less than or equal to two, then we can go ahead and open the inventory. Like inventory. Ah, right. Now that we've got this, we're going to need to make the prefab for the uh, chest inventory. Once we have the chest allowing us to open the inventory here, we need to make it so we can right click it with a mouse, which I've done here. So obviously we need a way to close it as well. Now in the player script, obviously uh, I've just quickly removed it, but here we had something similar to this here, which would get he down and then obviously he would escape, which would then close it here. So what we can do instead is if we go to inventory manager, we need to get a reference to the player. Down here, if we have an update function, we can say we need a private ball has inventory open, like so. And if we go down to open container, we can say have inventory open is equal to true, and we'll close it, that's equal to false, like so. Now, private void update, if, if we have inventory open, we can say if, uh, sorry, if import I'll get key down, key code dot escape inside here we can open container this will be new container player hotbar remember that will always be shown when we don't have a container open so obviously that will be the one we default back to so first will be null then player dot so we don't get inventory like so and that will be has inventory open is false so we can't reopen that every time we press escape. Now, if we go to player, if we get rid of the is open uh, thing, uh, just quickly go back to inventory manager a second, sorry. Public ball has inventory currently open. Inside here, we can return has inventory open, like so. Go back to player, and where we've got is open, we can say, inventory manager dot instance dot has inventory currently open and we can open the player else we just open the container hotbar hmm. now if we go to chest down here we can say if distance is less than or equal to two and inventory manager dot has current open inventory and that needs to be false then we can open the container chest so just quickly looking at all of that that looks right e yes inventory manager just default that to false to begin with inventory player Right, I've noticed obviously a problem before we even start. We're opening the container here, which will then default it to true. So we won't be able to open anything else. So what we can do inside here, we can, uh, if we just do another method quickly, public void reset inventory status. In this idea, we can say has inventory open is equal to false, which will then reset it. This will only be used for this specific method by reopening the inventory. So, inventory manager dot instance dot reset uh, render. No, sorry, reset inventory status there, which will set it to false. So now we know. <coughs> excuse me. Now, if we go to play. Should still be able to see the hotbar. Press E to open the inventory, like so. Which is good. Yes. Now, if we just uh, run over to the. Let me just quickly reset my mouse. Right click, open. There we go. Now, if we drag something inside there, press escape and run back. 
you can see we don't have them in the inventory here but if we run run back over here and open this you can see it's in the chest inventory like so okay let's just have quickly one last look at the screen before Yes. In the player script, where we've got, if it's open, uh, player hotbar is equal to, obviously when you press the E, we need to get rid of that because that will always reset it. So now if we press E and we ha we don't have an inventory open, we can open the container. We need to press escape to get out of any open containers. So we don't actually need, we never needed that in there in the first place. So now, if we look back here, I have noticed one thing as well, and that the player obviously moves around when you can open an inventory. So if we take a look here, and we go to first person controller, inside player, if we just quickly open that up again, uh, let's get a reference to our uh, oh, are they on using hmm. let's see if there's a workaround private object like so these will be stuff to disable like so and inside here uh, update yes uh, no sorry they need to be inside the inventory manager so in here we could do public objects stuff to disable when we open a container down here we can say for each object obj in stuff to disable obj that need uh, oh that is the wrong type of object i've used it could be capital o now for each object obj dot Okay, instead of objects, you want to type in mono behavior. So mono behaviors array stuff to disable here, like so. And when we go down to open container for each mono behavior obj and stuff to disable, as long as the script derives from mono behavior, we can say obj dot this uh, sorry enabled equal to false, like so. And then obviously in the close container like this, we can say obj dot enabled equal true. And I do believe that needs to be in our escape instead of closed container but if, if we're keeping in here as well we can obviously um just for reference just in case we need to use that script further down the line so inside here we'll add that there like so so that re-enables them so now if we go back to the uh scene editor sorry we go to our inventory manager we can now see stuff to disable here now if we pass in Oh, we're going to need this hmm. down here. Add tab, make that uh, sorry, not hierarchy. We need to make that an inspector too. Just scroll down here. If we lock this one, we can click on player, which changes this one here. We need to drag in first person controller, like so. Sorry, first person controller here, like this. Now, if uh, sorry, let's just close this. Go back to here. Yep, first person obviously opening the containers hotbar. So inside inventory manager, inside here, we can uh, in the in the reset. We can just simply add that in there too, because obviously we're only going to be using this uh, method once, which is at the start of the game. So now, if we go back in, click play and reset that. You can see obviously it still works again. Now let's go over here, let's realign my mouse and do this, we can no longer use mouse look and walk around, but if we press escape we can redo it again, like so. And we can do the same with obviously opening the inventory and escaping again, we can now move. So, that should be it for this time. And I'll see you